The Eastern Front of World War II saw many of the largest armored clashes in history. The Panzer IV for Germany and the T-34 for the Soviet Union formed the backbone of their armored divisions for much of the war. These were the most widely produced, cost-effective, longest-serving, and successful tanks for Germany and the Soviet Union. The T-34's most notable feature was its sloping armor, which was uncommon prior to the tank's introduction, but became standard when it demonstrated its benefits. In the early stages of the war, Panzer leader General Heinz Guderian asserted that the T-34 had vast superiority over contemporary German tanks. It was faster, far more mobile off-road, easier to maintain, better armored, and had a better gun. The Panzer IV was the workhorse of the German tank forces, right up until the end of the war. The early versions, Panzer IV Model A to Model F1, had a short 75mm low-velocity gun intended to provide fire support. This gun was unable to penetrate the T-34's 45mm armor, which was effectively 90mm due to the slope, whereas the T-34's F-34 gun could easily destroy the Panzer IV's 50mm frontal armor. The shock of encountering the Soviet T-34 and KV-1 tanks made the Germans quickly develop a newly mounted gun capable of piercing the Soviet armor. In early 1942, the Panzer IV was equipped with a long-barrel high-velocity 75mm L-43 cannon, and the improved variant was designated as Model F-2. This was able to penetrate the T-34's armor at all angles, from distances up to 1,000 meters. The German L-43 gun was superior in terms of armor penetration, capable of penetrating 82mm of armor with an armor-piercing round, against 60mm for the T-34's F-34 gun at 1,000 meters. Germans had a better gun, better optics to shoot first, while T-34 was better armored. Also, 50mm frontal armor wasn't upgraded yet on initial F-2s, but Russian 45mm armor was sloped, so it was as good as 90mm. While the Panzer IV would be destroyed in one shot, so was the T-34 within one kilometer. However, the Russians were presumably not convinced that firing targets from one kilometer distance was worthwhile. In 1943, the Russians would not typically fire from that distance, but the Germans preferred it. The two-man turret crew arrangement in the T-34 required the commander to aim and fire the gun, an arrangement common to most Soviet tanks of the day. The Russian tank force lacked situation awareness due to this. It is often said that Germans could fire three rounds, while Russians fired one. One of the memorable clashes between the T-34s and the Panzer IVs was during the Battle of Prokhorovka in July 12, 1943. German commander Rudolf von Ribbentrop was credited with knocking out 14 T-34s at Prokhorovka with a Panzer IV mounting L-43 cannon. His tanks fired and destroyed several T-34s at about 800 meters, while the Russians could not hit any from that distance. The T-34s managed to knock out Panzer IVs from Ribbentrop's platoon at roughly 300 meters. Radios were not standard equipment on early T-34s and were only installed on special command tanks. Von Ribbentrop stated in an interview after the war, that the only reason why he was still alive that day, was due to the fact that the Soviet T-34s didn't have a commander at the time. In late 1942, the Model G was initially equipped with the same L-43 gun, 
but was later upgraded to a more powerful, longer 75mm L-48 cannon. This gun was far superior to the 76mm gun fitted to the T-34. By this time, the Panzer IV had 80mm frontal armor, which could deflect shots from the Russian tanks. However, the heavier armor and larger gun increased the tank's weight and put strain on the front suspension. The introduction of the Panzer IV-H version in 1943 was viewed by many as the most successful design based on that chassis. It soon became the most produced version of the Panzer IV tank. At this stage, the T-34's only significant advantage over the Panzer IV was mobility and ease of production. However, the reasons why the Soviet industry was able to produce tanks, at a ratio of 5 to 1 compared to their German counterparts, were mainly the same reasons why they were regularly losing them at a 4 or 5 to 1 ratio. The introduction of the T-34-85 with a longer 85mm cannon, created in 1943 and entering mainline service in 1944, was the Soviet response to keeping it competitive. Firing their commonly used APCBC round, the performance of the 85mm was almost identical to the Panzer IV's 75mm L-48. The German gun had a slightly better performing APCR round, and retained slightly better penetration over longer ranges, retaining 64% penetration at a range of 2000 meters, compared to 58% for the 85mm, while the 85mm had a better HE round, due to its larger caliber. With the superior Carl Zeiss optics for the German tanks, the ability to see and shoot far was a distinct advantage on Russia's wide open fields. While the turret grew large enough to accommodate a dedicated gunner, the T-34-85 also got a better dose of armor. Its armor was good all around during World War II. This was in contrast to all other countries, which focused mainly on frontal armor. The front of the Panzer IV turret was still protected by a 50mm plate, while the T-34 had a 90mm gun mantlet, 45mm at the sides to the Panzer's 30mm, and 45mm to 20mm in the rear. Armor scheme of the T-34 was flat out better, although by a smaller lead, than it appears to on paper. Mobility is by far the biggest advantage of the T-34-85 over the Panzer IV. Because of the increased weight over the early models, the T-34-85 had lost almost all of its mythical advantage in lower ground pressure, but it was still faster and handled cross-country movement better, due to better suspension. Despite being a larger tank, the T-34's interior space was severely limited by the sharp slopes of its front and sides, making it a severely cramped war machine. It was significantly less ergonomic, cramped, uncomfortable, and risky to use than the Panzer IV. The positioning and quality of the optics, as well as the commander's cupola, gave it weaker vision than the Panzer IV, and the location of the escape hatches made evacuation more difficult. When the two tanks first met in 1941, the Panzer IV's rugged reliability was the envy of Soviet tankers, whose machines, including brand new T-34s, were simply breaking down beneath them with alarming ease. As time progressed, particularly in the model 1944, the Soviets made significant efforts to address the vehicle's severe reliability issues, whereas the Germans, in order to address the weaknesses of their own machine, added more armor and larger guns, putting strain on the suspension and engine. By the end of the war, the T-34-85 was a considerably newer machine that could still be upgraded, but the Panzer IV had reached the limits of its chassis. Ultimately, there was no substantial difference, at least not between the tanks themselves, in terms of firepower or reliability. The Panzer IV had a stronger front hull, 
but the T-34 had superior turret and the side armor. The T-34 was vastly more mobile, while the Panzer IV was far easier to use. Finally, it's difficult to rank one of the two significantly higher than the other. While their strengths lie in different areas, they're both remarkably comparable and extremely lethal war machines. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.